to Janet Zenith Cable Vision. Thank you for watching. It's time for talk. Each evening at this time, Monday through Friday, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. Time for Talk is a community betterment service designed to cooperate with our local community betterment program. And now, it's time for Talk. A history of Bunkland County, Missouri, 1845-1895. That's old history for Bunkland County, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And we have in our studio as our very special guest, Mr. Wesley Buck, who was born and raised in this section of Bunkland County, who is uh, really an old-timer in these parts, probably knows more history about Bunkland County itself than, than possibly any man here. Spends uh, some of his time um, going around to the high schools and uh, lecturing to uh, young people about what Bunkland County was like. Mr. Bucks, great to have you consent to come down and talk with us and give us some of this, the facts about this history. Um, <laughs> How did you come about this uh, this book? Um, I bought it. Bought it. Okay, <laughs> it's it's really a treasure for yes, someone. Yes, it is. It really is. Now this was written by a lady who came in who lived here. Lived in about Mary's. born in in this county around Lulu. All right. And uh, she went later on. She went to St. Louis and educated her boys in the university there. And one of them was a road scholar, Vester, and uh, a very highly intelligent woman. All right, and she, she decided she would write the history of Bunkland County. It's good that she had presence of mind to do this. Now, specifically, we asked Mr. Uh, Buck today if he would talk with us about uh, what he knows about the earthquake. The New Madrid earthquake, it's commonly called, but I think it just disrupted everything uh, all the way down of 1811 and 1812. Um, Mr. Buck, your information about this, you've dug on this for years. Where has most of that information come from? Well, I'd have to say quite a bit of it came from Mary Smith Davis. All right. And then, of course, I've read uh, numerous histories, and they all quoted. All right. Now, did that New Madrid earthquake change our land terrain? It did. It did. It really did. Uh, how? What, what do you know about it? Tell us what's interesting. Well, uh, one of the most interesting things, I think, is, is uh, the earthquake, the fault runs in a northeast, southwest direction. And you notice that all the sand blows and the sloughs run in the same direction, which was the result. You have Buffalo Creek, uh, Honey Cypress, Kennemore, Taylor Slough. All running in, all running in the same directions in the south west or northeast direction. All your sand blows, which was the, where it blew up, the earth blew up, and when you're working in the fields, you uh, find large lumps of charcoal. And on my farm, along Buffalo Ditch, I find, uh, it looks like rocks, uh, well, I call it iron ore, it's, it comes out in huge chunks that I should have brought up. I wish you'd have brought us. I will bring some all right, the next all right. time. Now, all right, go ahead and tell me about those. What, what are they? Well, they're just like a rock almost, but I don't know what the composition never have had them analyzed, but they came, there's no, nothing like that on top surface. And uh, they, they bound to come from deep in the earth. So you think these were thrown up with the they earthquake? They were thrown up with the earthquake. It had to be. All right, now, now that earthquake, were there people living in this area? No, no one lived. Uh, the first man in Duncan County was Howard Moore. He came to Kennett in 1829 and bought the, the Chief Chillicaw's rights to, I don't know whether that was squatter's rights or what rights he had, probably squatter's rights. And he owned a little hut here, uh, yeah, out of Chillicaw, okay, you, you don't know where that is. Yeah. And okay. he owned, he had rights to uh, quite a bit, uh, probably nearly all of Kennett. And Howard Moore bought those rights, being the first white man. All right. So, and then where did Mr. Moore live? Did he go on down to the Huntersville area? Did he stay in the No, uh, he, he, must, he must have stayed here in Kenya. Okay. Yes, right. he did because, you know, I know the okay. family. All right, the first man then uh, in the Huntersville, did you say Huntersville was the oldest settlement in yes. Duncan County? Yes, yes. And what year are we talking about? We're talking about 1832, okay. William Horner. Okay, William Horner came in 1832. And, and built a log house on the banks 
of the river on an Indian man, and the river ran directly south of his house. Okay, now do you think that river was changed during the earthquake? The yes, course of that river? yes, it changed it many places. It changed the channel. You can see where the old channel was. Still, right. can you still, still see, see the, where channel. the old channel? All right, now that whole area then that was formed uh, by the earthquake in the in the um, uh, Hornersville area, is what we see there now, has that been dug or was that created by the earthquake? No, uh, by 1914, I saw the first uh, boat, that they, float, they were all floaters in, barge-like things. And they built this up on a platform, and uh, my uncle uh, lived there, and I stood all night with him, and I watched the launching of it. They dug a hole in the, big hole in the earth and pumped it full of water, and then they shoved this, they greased some poles and took pitch bars, they had, they had scotch, scotches there to hold it, and they took those out and they pinched that, that floater off there in, in 19 and 14 and started digging, which was the large ditches or canals that we see east of Kennett now, running on some of the floodway up toward Cape Girada. All right, now what did this country look like in here up to that time? Well, there was a parade called the Grand Parade, running from Karoo to Harville, which uh, it, when the white man came here, uh, there wasn't, there might have been a few scattering trees, but what caused that to be treeless, I, no one knows, but. But it was just a parade. It pool. was a parade with high grass, uh, high as a man on a horse in places. And uh, just why it was a parade, no one knows. And, and there were trees all around it? All the around city. it, I mean dense timber. Okay, but here's a prairie. Here's a prairie. Okay, right now what prairie. kind of timber was all around? All around that? Yeah. Well, they were oak and, and uh, in the swamp cypress and uh, tupelo gum and uh, ash. Okay, so that, that's, the, that's the wet and some cottonwood. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now then, uh, they began in, in uh, 1914 yes, to dredge that out. Yes. Okay, and that's created what? Is that the Big Lake area? Is no, it? no, no, no. No, the Big Lake was a result of the earthquake. Okay. But in Real Foot Lake. Okay, Real Foot Lake and it, Big, and Big Lake. Lake. As a result of 18 le of the New Madrid earthquake. Okay, so so there was a, a just an area called Big Lake that ran from where to where? It ran from the Missouri state line on the north border. To Highway 18 down at Manila. That's the length of it. Okay, well, it runs just a little bit on the Okay, side that's about 18. how many miles? About uh, 12 miles, we'll say. Okay, so there was a lake created near Huntersville all the way to Manila, uh, 16 miles long. Yeah. Just not nearly as big and, uh, as, as Real Foot Lake, no, but no. the same sort of thing. Same thing. Only it was not so much. Okay, is the, the earthquake itself. Uh, did the ground here buckle and heave, and do you think there was, have you read descriptions of that? I have. What, how does it sound? Well, I read a letter I, uh, that Michael Branham wrote, and he was at Crothersville at that time, and he tell, I read that when a small boy, and I think I know where the letter is, but I just can't get okay, it. Okay, can you recall any of it? Yes, I do. He said it rose up like a loaf of bread to a height, a great height, and then it burst and leave a, uh, fissures in the earth, uh, several feet deep and several miles long, and uh, probably four or five feet wide. Uh, and blo it blew up uh, sand and charcoal and uh, sulfurous uh, liquid, uh, something like, a, smelled something like a rotten egg. Yeah. And it was dark in color, and it, it, uh, it got black as, of course this was, uh, this was two o'clock in the morning, on the 16th of December in, in 1811. It started the first. That was okay. the first, first big And break. that's when they hit a loaf of bread. It was like a burst. loaf of and burst. And you had this terrible sulfur smell yes. and, the, and the sky got dark? Got and dark as pitch. Okay. Now, we had a series of earthquakes. A series of earthquakes, that's right. Uh, in January the 7th, of course, we had the small tremors at that, January the 7th, one of equal intensity appeared again. And they were frightened, of course. Some cursed, some prayed, 
all the animals of every description, every bird uh, made that uh, sound that they would make in fear, you know, whatever that might happen to be, it'd be different sounds for birds and animals. All that went on, and all the people, and they couldn't stand up. They, if they moved, they had to crawl. They, it forced them to the ground. How long did they think this went on? How long did this go on? This went on all through 12 at intervals. Uh, it's almost over. Six, you see the 16th of December, just short, uh, two weeks, we'll say. Okay. So the, and then start... Two weeks later, we had another huge tremor. Well, uh, uh, January the 7th. Uh, 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 equal intensity. Okay. Then all through 12 at times, intervals, but not so severe. They all left out. I think there were two families that stayed. All the rest of them left out. Left the uh, household goods and everything, and thieves came along in flatboats, and they stole that, of course. And I remember one girl that was in the house there, and they right left her as log, and it, she got a log on her leg, and she couldn't get out. They were all frightened, and they got thinking about it and told some man, and he went back and rescued that girl and took removed that log, and she lived at, uh, now I'm alive, I don't remember how old she was. You mean the log house? The log home house. was log house. Oh, the log house. And, and it collapsed on yeah. her, pinned her under in the, the log. That's right. And somebody, the family had already gone, but they... The family had gone. They got so frightened, they didn't notice it. Okay, but somebody did go back and rescue her. Back and rescue her, that's right. All right. Uh, go ahead, anything else? All right, I remember that uh, we had pirates, river pirates at that time, that would... Uh, now, what river are we... Now, we're talk talking about the Mississippi now. That was a... Uh, okay, all right, you're talking about the Mississippi. Mississippi. Okay. All right, the Mississippi River, and they had pirates. They had both black and white on the Mississippi pirates. They, uh, you come along with your flat boat or whatnot and tie up there. They tied up there at New Madrid. And uh, I can't think of the captain's name on this boat, but that anyway, no, ahead. that wouldn't matter. But anyway, uh, they rec uh, they just uh, they figured out these pirates are going to get them. So that night of the, uh, December the 16th, uh, they cut loose and floated down the river slightly, and the pirates they. Presume that they lost their life and they escaped, which they would have lost you their mean, life. You mean they were there at time, the they were time? They, yes, they were tied up there. Uh, right. Okay, and so everybody that was on the, on the river. Now, right. have, I, have I read anything about, did the river change channels? Did the Mississippi yes, change in direction? Many, in many places. Oh, it, it flowed northward. For I thought it I flowed. remembered reading north. that. It flowed north for, for, for a while. For a while. For a while. And don't you know wherever that ended up at the north? The south flow was a terrible mess. And it covered all the lowlands in on both sides, you see, with water. Okay. That's... And didn't pretty well this whole area from Carothersville from the Mississippi, that was all flooded at time, wasn't it? We didn't have any levees. Didn't have any levees. So the river came, Mississippi River it came, came all the way from Carothersville yeah. to Hornersville. To Hornersville, through the streets. Okay. There probably were no streets there up there. No, there were everything covered. Yeah, that's right. There was a little little street on, on the river. Hornsville's on the river. That was the early that was okay. all Hornsville. Where the town is now was Cotton Patch. All right, all right. You have been listening to Mr. Wesley Buck. He's been talking about what he's read here in the history of Duncan County as he's talked about the, the earthquake of New Madrid, um, the history, what has gone on in the big lake and uh, and Mr. Buck, you have just begun to talk to us, and I know you know a lot of interesting things. He has promised us some of the history of um, this area and Hornsville in particular. And uh, you watch us on successive nights, and, and we're going to go into all this. And thank you, Mr. Buck, for being our guest. Thank you.